So how does something like this end up passing through an entire organization and no one think of what it looks like? So the Dune popcorn bucket has actually probably been a good thing because it's gotten so much attention that it's probably helped the prevalence of the movie and the ticket sales within that. But there's no mistaking the fact that it's a tad suggestive. So how does something like this happen? Well, sure, you can always blame corporate bureaucracy of like, oh, everybody approved this and nobody looked at it close, but that's not really necessarily the case. First of all, the Dune popcorn bucket does look like the worms from Dune. To be fair, a worm is a very unhelpful creature for trying to turn into this type of a product because if you zoom in on it close, it looks like the wrong end of a camel. And if you zoom out from it a long distance, it still looks like the wrong end of a camel. So it's not a creature that is really very helpful. And since the new sandworms, the movie, spoiler alert, don't really look like the ones from the old movie that have like three jaws, there's no way to really differentiate it from its phallic nature. So the product design challenge right off the bat is just difficult. There's no way to really be successful with this. And if they also say, ah, oh, we want the teeth to be flexible and felt as you put your hand in there, that's kind of a new requirement that really puts you into a hole. But there's one other factor in this that people don't really realize. Yes, somebody might have made the wish list to have like the teeth be flexible, and then the worms themselves are just not helpful from a product design standpoint. But then if you go one step further, in order to injection mold it, it had to be made this way. It had to be flexible and have kind of the open, inviting shape in order to be ejected from the mold. This is an engineering requirement of the manufacturing process. So something that started out as a bad prompt got worse and then got worse to where you end up with what the Dune popcorn bucket was, which again, might have been a really good marketing play, but ultimately probably wasn't on purpose. So now the question is, what is the better option if you were actually wanting to redo this? Well, first of all, you might be able to expand your options. Today with mass production 3D printing, you're able to make different shapes and you're able to make them at scale so you have less restriction from the manufacturing process. And then to get away from kind of the suggestive nature of the worms in this application because of how the worms are designed in the movie, which is epic, but you might actually call back to the older version of the movie and use a worm like that. This way you can get a design that is less suggestive, more interesting, and way more difficult to make, but can still be produced at scale. And that's how you end up with a popcorn bucket kind of like this. This popcorn bucket still allows people to reach into the top and get a good piece of popcorn, but you have the shape of the traditional sandworm, both from the covers of the books and from the original movies back in the 70s. This bucket is actually made with 3D printing. You can make this upper shape because these complex shapes inside of here can all be printed. And if you're able to use a large print farm like ours, you're able to produce tens of thousands of them as is necessary for a movie like this so that there's still a collector item but produced at scale. This bucket is able to snap onto the top of it just like the traditional one is. And you can use all types of different shapes and colors. But again, you can get whatever geometry you want you can still get it made large and you can get it made reliably to where it looks really good. Even though this is printed, you probably can't tell that it's printed. It's a really good design. And also it's more of a collector item because once this is done, it doesn't just sit on the shelf and again, look like wrong end of the camel sitting on your shelf. It is something that you could actually have as a piece of decor. You could hang headphones from it. You could use it for all kinds of different things after it's done being the bucket. No, it does not have these sensual tendrils on the inside, but that's probably a good thing. Now, the way this was designed is we actually used a design that was found online from this designer right here. This allows you to get a design that is original and good from somebody who is an expert designer. And then we did the engineering modifications in order to have it clip onto the top of the bucket and do what it needs to do and also make sure it's staying within scale. So if you are a company looking to do something like this, you can license from about 40 million models online to get close to the design that you want and still credit the designer or pay them a royalty fee for the design of it all. But then you are able to get the skills and expertise to create a design that you might not otherwise be able to find. If you're looking to create an actual product that you might sell long-term, you can partner with that designer in order to create a base design, and then you can convert it into whatever type of product you're looking for. So that process is relatively easy if you don't have design expertise in-house. So this is a good way to improve what was kind of a bad situation. To be fair, again, it was a product that was just kind of set up poorly because they were having to use the design of the worms from the movie and then somebody wanted them to have teeth and then they also had to make it brown and it goes in a butter and all the things just piled up to make this 
over the line. But if you have more design flexibility with the manufacturing process, you're able to call back to the history of the IP and can make it more nostalgic because you're able to reference the old movie while people are going to the new movie. You're able to create a higher fan interaction so that people can really enjoy the collectible and the experience of using it without having the slightly concerning feeling of when you're actually using it. So that is how we would fix and did fix the Dune popcorn bucket. If somebody wanted to make 10 or 100,000 of these later on, we'd be down to do it because it is possible now with mass production 3D printing and printing gives you so much more flexibility. So hopefully that was insightful to you to see how something that seems obviously bad could still kind of come about with just compounding small requirements that pile up to create something that is obviously not good, but is passed through the whole chain. So hopefully you can use that in your own product design futures. And if you're ever looking for a popcorn bucket, heck, hit us up. Have a great day, everybody.